three, our learning objective is to be able to compute the new balance of a savings account statement. So we're going to take the, so the last two sections, and maybe this one may seem really basic to you, but we're going to take that, and, and it's going to be basic, and then we're going to take it to the next level at the next section, and then up another level at 5.5, five, up another level at 5.6. So this is going to get increasingly a little bit more difficult as we get towards the end of the chapter. So account statements, when you have a statements account, you, uh, your bank may mail or make available on the internet a monthly or quarterly account statement. How many quarters are there in a dollar? Four. Four. How many quarters are there in a year? Four. Four. So when you see the word quarter, it means four. It just means I split something up into four chunks. Um, so say <coughs> account statement shows the status of your account. This includes all deposits to, withdrawals from, and interest earned and credited to your savings account. Many financial institutions are encouraging their patrons to go paperless because if they don't have to mail you a piece of paper every month, they save on postage and they save on buying the paper and the ink to print it. So, um, and check the status of their account online. So if they can get you to go online and you're completely comfortable with that, that's a win-win for both of you. Okay, so our new balance on our account is our previous balance plus any interest that we earn and plus any deposits we made minus any withdrawals that we took out. So say um, I've been saving up for a concert, so I've been putting money in my savings account because, man, I want to go see Garth Brooks in concert. Whatever. Don't judge. Um, and, but it's $250 a ticket, so I save up, and then I withdraw that $250 so that I can go to the school. That's why you would take money out of your savings. Um, <clears throat> it's really sick. All right, so... I don't, I don't remember if we've talked about this, but when each of you puts your money into a savings account, so we got Christian, we got Vicente, Manny, everybody puts their money into the, into the bank, then Bella goes, I want a loan to buy a car. So I, I'm the bank and I have this chunk of money from everybody putting their money in there, and I go, okay, Bella, Here's money to buy a car. I'm going to charge you 8% interest. Then what I do is I give Manny 1% interest on the money he did. I give Vicente 1% interest. Then I give each, each of you a little bit of that interest to pay you back for letting me make money on the loans I give out to other people. So the reason why when you put money into a savings account, you get the interest, a little bit of interest, is because the bank is using your money to loan money out to other people. Does that make sense? So when you put, checking account is not like that. Checking account is for you and you're, you're allowed to take money out and put money back in. But when you put money into a savings account, the bank takes that money and loans it to other people. So, and that's why they give you interest. Um, the money you save because they're using it to make money. Interesting idea, right? All right, so let's look at Lauren Yamaguchi. She receives her savings account statement quarterly. Okay, so if you get it quarterly, you get it a fourth of the way through the school, the, um, the calendar year. After checking to be sure all transactions have been recorded correctly, she checks the calculations. What is the balance in her account on July 1st? There's no action item here on her statement. Your action items are down here with 
finding the new balance. Okay, so the, her new balance is her previous balance. We look here for what her balance was on the 1st of April. So that's this amount right here. She earned $4.11 in interest. So we're adding the interest to our account balance. She had deposits of $250, $150, and $80. That's all right here. We're going to add those in together. And then she went to, not a Garth Brooks concert, but she went to one of those um, concerts in Tahoe where it's nice, sat on the patio, it's fun. Um, so she withdrew $100 for that, so that's minus $100. So her grand total in her account is $633.61. So you guys are filling in all of this on your notes. All this line and the $633.61. I'll give you guys a moment. So 5.4 is calculating simple interest. Our learning objective is to calculate simple interest and the amount we have in our account after we add our interest in. Okay, so calculating simple interest. When you deposit money into a savings account, you're permitting the bank to use the money. Here you go. The bank pays interest which is the amount of money paid for the use of the lender's money. The most common method for calculating interest is the simple interest formula. This is interest paid on the original principal. So not only do I want you guys to write in principal here, I want you to put two stars next to it. Ah, uh, let's go three. I got room for three. Three stars next to the word principal. This word is going to come up over and over and over again in this chapter. If we don't remember what it is, it's going to make all of our other calculations really hard. So we're going to put two stars next to it, and we're going to remember that this is the amount of money earning interest. It's what you put in originally. Okay. So, it's like uh, when you put money in the bank, the bank doesn't keep it, it gives it to other people. If you put it on the reserve, then you still touch it. Yeah. Checking, the bank doesn't lend your checking account stuff to other people, but your savings account will lend it to other people. So, you know, it's so you know all the paperwork with the really tiny writing that you sign at the bottom and just go sure I'll sign this in there it says that a certain amount so if you want they keep a certain amount of money on hand um, my credit union keeps um, says that if I want anything more than ten thousand dollars I have to let them know ahead of time so that they can have the cash available for me so a big withdrawal you, you have to let your bank know ahead of time so that they have the cash for you. How much would you um, do? Well, what, what movie was it? There was like a weird sniper movie um, at where they were going to take like $4 million and it took like three hours for the bank to get all that money together. It's like a bank robbery kind of movie. I'm imagining that would be a thing. Um, uh, the bigger your bank is, the more money they'll have on hand. For you, so if you if you deal in that kind of in the thousands of dollars, you might want to consider not banking at a smaller credit union like I do, but maybe banking at a big bank where they they can have that cash available for you more readily. What bank is this? Like uh, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. Um, I bank at U.S. Bank where I left that note for the teller. Say that again, Benny. Yeah. 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 Um, simple interest is based on three things. 
the principal, remember this is our special new word now, Yay, um, the annual interest rate. So we did a lot of interest rate stuff at the beginning of the semester. Just remember to put that percentage key, press the percentage key in your calculator. If you don't hit that percentage key, your answers are going to be wrong every time. And the amount of time that goes by um, for which you're borrowing the principal. Okay, so our interest formula is I pert. So it's I pert. So it's interest is equal to principal times rate times time. That gives you how much interest the account makes for you. To find out how much you have in your account, you add the interest back in to your principal amount. So the amount in your account is equal to your principal plus the interest you've made. Now, if you get that good account, it'll take your principal, calculate interest, add it back in, and you'll also contribute, like if you can contribute money every month as well. So not only are you adding every month to the principal, but then the interest is adding to that amount and it's just like blowing up big. Ready? Uh, again, I'll add interest. How much money do you have to have you um, My goal, so I can live off just the interest, I want to have a million dollars worth of assets. So that includes my house. So my house is going to be around four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars, and so I need about five hundred thousand dollars in my savings, um, my retirement account, so that I can live off the interest for that. Then I can sell my house, add that to my retirement, and live pretty comfortably. In the book of Vista, that's a Seinfeld reference. Okay, you guys ready to see how this works? All right, our friend Joyce Tyler deposits $900. Above the $900, let's give that a capital P for principal. $900 is the principal amount. She gets 5.5% annual interest rate. So this is how much she gets in interest each year. We're going to determine simple interest for three time periods, for three years, three months, and three days. So we're going to do this step one and step two three different times. Ooh, let me give ourselves some space. So let's go A, B, and C. Okay, so we're going to calculate I pert. So the interest is the principal amount, that's $9,000, times the rate, times the amount of time that goes by. And in this case, it's three years. So times three. So in this case, the amount of interest is 9000 times 5.5%, and um, this one doesn't, the percent key doesn't work the way I like it to on this calculator, so I just put point two. Um, times three years. So in three years, just putting that $9,000 in the account, she makes $1,485. So the amount that she has in her account is nine thousand plus that fourteen eighty five. So in three years, at five point five percent annual interest, she um, she has in her account ten thousand four hundred and eighty five dollars. I'll pause for a second. But oh, this B is a little bit different. We're doing, so Manny, laser focus. This is like meat and potatoes. This is the weird one. So B is three months. Anytime that you're not 
in years, you're going to divide by how many there of those there are in a year. So we're here in months land. How many months are in a year? Twelve. If you didn't already write that on your the front of your folder, you should write that. Um, so we're going to do the same interest calculation. We're going to go nine thousand times the five point five percent times the three. But instead of just leaving it hanging because we're three months, we divide by twelve. So you're always going to divide by how many of those are in one year. The reason we do that is because our interest rate is per year. So if we're chunking it up into anything other than years, we have to divide it into little increments. So <clears throat> 9,000 times 5.5% times three months, but then divided by how many months there are in a year. So if we left our money in that account for three months and then said we want it all back, they would give us a hundred and twenty three dollars and seventy five cents. And we're going to add that on to our nine thousand. And just for letting them have our money in their bank, we now have $9,123.75. So it's not that I had to do no labor to make a hundred bucks in three months. Zero labor on my part. I just threw my money in there and the interest earned it for me. You see how beautiful this is? It's money for nothing. It's, this is a concept that will change your life forever. Lastly, we have to do three days. So calculation for three days, we do the same. We go 9,000 times 5.5% times three days. How many days are in a year? 365 days in a year. So 9,000 times 0 0.055 times 5 percent times three days divided by 365. So if I just let the bank have my money for three days and then take it back out, the bank will owe me four dollars and seven cents. So at that interest rate, with that amount of money, we've made $4 for doing nothing. So our amount is $9,000 plus $4.07, which is $9,004.07. All right, so we're going to do number one together. So our A, if we want to find the interest, we take our principal times our rate times our time. In this case, it's four years. If you're in years, you don't have to do any dividing. So that's 4,000 times 6%, and this calculator doesn't have a good percent key. Um, times four years. That's $960 in interest. And so the amount in your account is $4,000 plus $960, which is $4,960. If we want to do it in months, I do the same account, the same calculations, principal times the rate times the amount of months. So I have to divide it by how many months there are in a year.
So 4,000 times 6% times 4, but divided by 12. So in this case, for four months, I've made 80 bucks. And then the amount in my account now is $4,080. help you see the two problems. Last one. Same calculation. 4,000 times 6% times 4 days divided by what? 365. Four thousand times six percent times four days divided by three hundred and sixty five. Two dollars and sixty three cents. So in my account, I have four thousand. $2.63. Mm -hmm.